All right, well, first, I'd like to thank Sages for giving me the opportunity to present my research today. So the title of my project is The Impact of Functional Esophageal Gastric Outflow Obstruction on Outcomes of the Laparoscopic Nissen Fund Application for GERD Patients. So I have no disclosures. So esophageal gastric junction outflow obstruction, it's defined as an elevated integrated re re uh, relaxation pressure, or IRP, over 15 mm, uh, millimeters of mercury in the setting of preserved peristalsis, so it's not achalasia at the moment, according to the Chicago classification. And it's divided into primary versus secondary. And secondary reasons could be a hiatal hernia, could be eosinophilic esophagitis, um, could be a tumor. And once you've ruled out all those secondary causes, uh, then with this manometric finding, you can call it functional. And patients may complain of dysphagia, significant reflux, or both. And we don't know yet how these manifestations of their symptoms um, are indicative of how they do afterwards. So how do we manage functional esophageal gastric junction outflow obstruction? So uh, a recent systematic review said there's five ways to manage them. You can do expected management, you can do smooth muscle relaxants, Botox injections, pneumatic dilations, uh, and myotomies. And in these patients, um, expected management and Botox injections were the most common, but there was variable symptom resolution amongst the five, um, uh, depending on what measure you did or what management you did. So still the optimal management of these patients remains controversial. So what do we want to do? So we wanted, there's little published data on functional esophageal gastric outflow obstruction with the laparoscopic Nissen funnel application in the setting of objective findings of GERD. And um, in the setting of GERD is the key. So we want to evaluate the efficacy of the uh, Nissen funnel application on GERD patients with functional obstructions in terms of their GERD symptoms, their postoperative dysphagia, and we wanted to compare those to patients who didn't have this manometric finding and had normal or hypotensive lower esophageal sphincter pressures. So how do we do this? So it was a retrospective cohort study, and we included all patients who had laparoscopic Nissen funnel implications for GERD between 2009 and 2017. And to be included in our study, you have to be 18 years of age. You needed an objective diagnosis of GERD, so this could either be severe esophagitis on endoscopy or a positive pH test. And then you needed manometric data required to diagnose functional esophageal gastric outlet obstruction or hypertensive LES. And we excluded patients who had secondary reasons for outflow obstruction or redo operations. So uh, well, what were our primary outcomes? So we wanted to uh, focus on reflux symptoms. Um, dysphagia and quality of life. And we used the GERD symptom scale and the GERD healthcare quality of life score. And we also, as a secondary outcome, we wanted to know, well, if we wrap these patients, how many of them require dilations at one year follow-up? So all the patients in our um, study, there's 211 of them, 15 were the functional esophageal gastric outlet obstruction, and the rest were uh, our normal controls. And they all got a laparoscopic NIST and final application. And preoperatively, there's no differences in age, BMI, race, or percent GERD symptoms. And I'll just highlight that in my table one. So for classic GERD symptoms, most patients, as you would expect, had heartburn and regurgitation. So on the left is our functional outflow obstruction, 93% compared to 81. Uh, this is interesting. The dysphagia in our outlet obstruction group is actually less than you would expect in the literature. The literature is about 50%. In our group, it's 13%. And the control had higher rates, but it wasn't significantly higher. But interestingly, the actual dysphagia they report was higher, um, but not significantly. And their baseline reflux scores were uh, the same, elevated in both groups. So this is after they got their laparoscopic Nissen funnel application. We followed them at six week, one year follow up. And at six weeks, uh, there was no difference in their reflux symptoms. They were all vastly improved. And their dysphagia scores were also no different. Um, at one year, this trend continued uh, that there's no difference. And you can see their actual uh, absolute dysphagia score is uh, almost zero in both groups. And the need for dilation is about 13% in both arms, so is no different. And here's the key on the bottom of the slide, is that no patient in either cohort required revision to a partial wrap, Botox injections, or a surgical myotomy. So for a discussion, I, there's no consensus to the best management of this patient uh, of these patients for a number of reasons. Partially, it's an uh, it's a manometric finding in its infancy. It's uh, through the advent of high re resolution manometry, we're just getting introduced to these patients. Uh, so there's few number of patients actually afflicted, and the actual symptoms are heterogeneous, which makes it difficult to manage these patients. Um, and our study is the first one to describe exclusively a cohort of GERD patients with functional outlet obstruction who are treated solely with the Nissen funnel application.
There's one other abstract that this was a subgroup population and not everyone got a laparoscopic distant front application. So we're actually the first. And I think um, in one sec, I'll tell you the key of the presentation. So treated patients with functional esophageal gastric out outlet obstruction had similar quality of life in terms of GERD uh, compared to patients with normal or hypotensive lower esophageal sphincter pressures. And there's no increased rate of post op dys dysphagia and no increased rate of dilation in one year. So how do you decide how to manage these patients? Because before, um, in the previous talk, they said that um, for their uh, group, they got heller myotomies. And I think this is the key on how to manage them. So the symptoms are key. So when you talk to your patient, the most important consideration is what are, what are they complaining about? If this is asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic, we'd suggest that you probably shouldn't do anything. That's what the literature says. Observe alone with or without therapeutic trial of Botox. If they complain of predominant dysphagia symptoms, which is what most of the literature is about, uh, treating more like achalasia makes mo most sense. So Botox injections, pneumatic dilations, and myotomy. But if their predominant symptoms are GERD and they have objective findings of GERD, they seem to, be fav they seem to do favorably with a NIST and fund application as we reported. Um, but wait, you're probably saying, well, performing a fund application to augment an already tight sphincter seen in these patients seems counterintuitive. But we would argue that in reflex patients, the LES is actually not too tight. And this is simply a manometric finding. So this could be an inaccurate measurement. Uh, measuring IRP's technology and time specific. It depends on what actual device you use, as well as when they measure the pressure. Is there artifact there? Is there bolus uh, pressurization or panesophageal pre uh, pressurization? Um, but also there's outliers individuals who might have an abnormally high IRP, but for them, they have a relatively hypotense lower esophageal sphincter. And this is our take home point. Uh, we feel that there will be patients who present to your clinic with these manometric findings and predominant reflex symptoms, who would benefit from a fund application? If you perform Botox or myotomy or dilations or treat them conservatively, then we don't feel like they would benefit as much and likely might make things even worse. So limitations, small number of patients, there's only 15. Um, our study endpoint was at one year. We picked that because we felt that after one year, um, there's other things that can be added, like maybe they have a recurrence of their hernia um, or other things that Sorry, they didn't have a hernia, but maybe they have a, a, a new hiatal hernia or, or other things that would, would add heter, heterogeneity to our data. So overall, GERD patients with functional esophagogastric outlet flow obstruction uh, achieve similar postoperative outcomes following this and fund application as patients without this metametric finding. And I'm happy to take questions.